Hey. Hi, Paula. Hi. Thanks for uh, taking the time to chat. Yeah, thanks for the invite. Of course. Um, how was the COVID test? I heard you just took one of those. I'm sure you've taken a lot yeah. this season so far. Well, most of the time over here, we do spit tests, so they're not terrible. But this one just went, like, pretty deep into the brain, so I'm not too happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have you test, like, every time you go to a new place? Yeah, you have to have 72 hours before, um, like, you pick up accreditation for a race. So we've been doing it quite often, but we also test for the U.S. ski team twice a week. So we test a lot. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Well, we won't do too much COVID talk. Um, first, um, I kind of want to just get an intro from you. Like, who are you? Um, if somebody just like not me, like not an interviewer asks you, what do you tell people? Um, like, obviously you're Paula, but like, what's your job? What do you do? Um, well, I'm Paula. I'm from Minnesota. I currently reside in Massachusetts. And I am an alpine skier, and so I consider myself a professional athlete, but I'm also a whitewater raft guide, so I guess I have two job titles, that would be. What kind of reactions do you get from people when that's, when you give that answer? Like, what do you get? Mo um, people are usually, like, mystified. They're like, oh, what type of, like, professional athlete? You're like, well, I, I'm an alpine skier, and they're like, well, that's downhill, right? And you're like, yes. <laughs> how much of that like do people actually understand what that means like do you have to like go into detail with that kind of thing like I don't know I, I think a lot of times when people are like oh I'm a pro skier like there's so many or a professional athlete in general there's so many different variations of that I don't know if people like fully grasp it yeah sometimes they do sometimes they don't it's kind of up in the yes and then um people start to kind of grasp what you do. You're like, yeah, you've probably seen it on the Olympics. Not that common to see on TV normally. But yeah, that's what I do for a living. <laughs> right. Right. Um, all right. So I apologize if we have some Wi-Fi issues here. It's kind of cutting in and out. Um, but we'll, we'll work through it and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Um, yeah. So you went to school at UVM um, for how long? Three years. What was your experience like with Vermonters overall? Like I, to me, they're like a very unique breed. Like it's a very specific type of person that opts to go and just like live in Vermont. And that's like, <laughs> that's their thing. Um, what did you get out of that experience? Um, I think Vermonters are like my people. I really like them. I think they're like hardy and rugged. Um, really, really nice. They're pretty similar to Minnesotans. So I grew up with like the whole like Minnesota nice growing up and so when I moved to Vermont I was actually pleasantly surprised with how nice everyone was yeah I think I feel like a lot of people kind of get the sense that Vermonters are a little like rough around the edges like and they're a little harsher overall and they kind of just like say what they mean but like I agree with you like I think for me they're in general like everybody's like super nice you just like the that outer shell I think is maybe a little thicker than it is for some other like people from some other areas yeah definitely but I'm from Minnesota people are also kind of rough it's because the weather's so cold what what was it like growing up in Minnesota um it was good I grew up in just like a south of the Twin Cities pretty close to Buck Hill um I spent a lot of time outside with my siblings and I would say I had a pretty normal childhood, lots of skiing, lots of sports. Other than that, it was okay. pretty normal. <laughs> were, uh, were your parents big skiers? Um, not ski racers, but ski instructors. What made you want to get into ski racing in general? Um, I don't know. I actually just fell in love with the sport. I learned to ski when I was two and a half with my mom and dad teaching me. So instead of going to daycare, I would just kind of tag along with ski lessons. And then after that, I just kind of loved it I loved always being outside I didn't really mind my toes being that cold and right. so I spent like every time I could on the mountain with my siblings or with my friends and I think I just became a ski racer because I was kind of good at it yeah <laughs> it's do you ever feel like I don't know like are you a skier in all aspects like do you actually like enjoy doing other aspects of skiing or is ski racing just kind of like your thing and that's what you stick to 
Uh, no, I enjoy all types of skiing. So once COVID hit this spring, I flew home from Ore and I spent the most of the spring touring. So I actually do really enjoy skiing. I like to go uphill and I like to go downhill. Not a great Nordic skier, but I can ski some powder turns once in a while too. That's awesome. That's good to hear. Like, I think a lot of times people associate, because like a lot of times your whole feed is just ski racing stuff, right? And like you don't necessarily always, like I'm not a ski racer. Like, so for me, <laughs> You look at someone who is and you're like, oh, like their form is awesome. They rip. But I don't know, like I, I don't necessarily understand it. And I think like the other aspects of skiing like adds so much to your to your ski game as a whole. I agree. I really do enjoy like skiing for like fun. I think ski racing is really great, but just the sport of skiing is kind of better than just ski racing. Are there days when you're not like super excited to go for a race and you're like, okay, I, I would much rather be like skiing pal, like than doing this course right now. Yeah. Usually there's some training days throughout like January, February, and it's like maybe snowed like four or five inches. It may be 10 inches. And you're like, Oh, like I have to go put my spandex suit on <laughs> and like slip the course like five times and then maybe take like three runs of training. Or I could have just like gone out and had some like soul skiing. But I usually have to go for the training because that is my job. Yeah. Do you actually get to do that a lot? Like, do you actually get soul skiing in? I'm sure you um, get it, like, obviously, like you said, like, when a pandemic doesn't have to hit, do you yeah. actually get out and ski for yourself? Yeah, I do try. We are pretty busy, like, training in the winter. But so in the spring, usually I get some good time up in Vermont. I go see some friends and spend some time at, like, Matter Valley in Sugarbush and ski backcountry with my friends, not backcountry, but like once the mountains close down, we'll ski up for like a sunset ski. Yeah. Um, competing in World Cups versus competing in NCAA, what's the difference? Like, what did you gain out of like competing in NCAA? Like, what's like, talk to me a little bit about that. Um, yeah. So competing for a college is so much different than competing for yourself. NCAA, you're competing for a whole school, but not only just your whole school, you have six Alpine athletes, six Nordic athletes. And so when you're in a star K, it's not really any more for you. It's for the team, it's for the school. And there's just like so much more pressure to perform because you are at the school representing them. And so if you don't perform, you're letting down so many more people than in a World Cup. World Cup, it's just like yourself, your technician, your coach but mostly in a world cup, you're just letting down yourself when you don't perform. Does, yeah, I guess that's, that's weird too. Like does the team aspect in a world cup, cause you always hear like U S ski team, U S snowboard team, like, and it's talked about as a team, like almost as much as the individual athlete. Does the team aspect of it, like play a role in how you feel about your own performances? Um, I guess yes and no. So like throughout the U.S. ski team, there are teams broken down, right? So you have like women's, you have men's, and then in those men's and women's, you have tech and speed. And then even farther, you have Europa Cup and you have World Cup and you have development. And so when your whole team, as in like the my team's the women's tech team, like World Cup tech team, when they do well, I'm so happy. So it's like it's more fun to win when myself and my teammate, you know, Brian do well. So if it's just like one person doing well, it's not as much fun, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> it does make sense. I think uh, the reason I ask this is because like you see the camaraderie, I think, with the team, especially on social media, like everybody's always like anytime anybody gets a win, anytime someone places well, like it just seems like everyone's so supportive, like almost like a kind of family atmosphere, I guess. So you wonder yeah. if that like if that adds to any like any pressure or like, I guess, excitement if you do do well. I don't think there's pressure from that because it's not like directly affecting those people, but I do think it is a, another form of support. So it's like when people are there to hype you up when you do well, it's like makes the win and whatever your best result or whatever in a world cup so much better. Like it's not about how you do comparatively to those. It's like how like you're doing with those people and how they support you. It's like what makes it feel better. Right. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, and on that topic, like dealing with nerves when you're in the start gate, like, is that a thing for you? Like, do you even, do you get nerves anymore? Like, <laughs> like, I mean, I feel like everybody gets them to some extent. And then sometimes the answer is like, okay, I get 
better. Like it helps me perform. Like it really, like it, it gets me going. And then for some people, like the nerves, like kind of shut them down. Like, is it, is it a factor? Yeah, I guess I think nerves are a factor for everybody, either if they're good nerves or bad nerves, but um, I deal with nerves the same way every race. So you just kind of try and breathe through it. I'm lucky enough to have my fiance as my technician. So he's kind of the best person in the world to calm me down. So when I kind of, he can like kind of notice when I'm starting to get about like a bit wound up, he like knows how to bring me like back down to zero. And I'm not really like a high stress person. So it's usually pretty mellow at the start and he um, helps keep that atmosphere. Right. And so I think dealing with nerves is just kind of part of the game and you just try your best. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess. I mean, that's always like, I think that's the best answer that's available. Right. Like, cause it's part of it, I think, but it's always like interesting to hear how different athletes deal with that part of it. Yeah. I think nerves are very specific to the person. I mean, if you've won a hundred times, I'm very sure you still get nervous because there's always pressure. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I said, I wasn't going to talk about COVID too much, but obviously your guys' whole season has changed. What, what's changed? What's been the most different thing for you? Um, well, number one, we're not in the U S cause we didn't get a race Killington. That's yeah. probably the biggest thing. That's like such a bummer for me being almost a Vermonter. <laughs> um, that's my favorite race <laughs> of the season. So I'm pretty sad for that one. Um, also the no fans when you get cross the finish line is kind of interesting um, where I'm lucky to have really great teammates that always cheer me on, but it's not quite as loud as normal. So you come across the finish line or you come over a break and you don't hear any noise and it's kind of weird, but it's almost like a bit calming because there's not as many eyes watching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Right. Like that's, if you use the crowd to get amped up and there's no crowd like this, it has to be a weird season for you. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I mean, in Killington, in the Stargate, you can literally hear the crowd. So I think it would have been more weird to be in Killington without a crowd. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like, that venue is – it's great. Like, and it's full. And, like, I think everybody that's there is, like, so passionate about ski racing and is so happy that there is ski racing in Vermont that, like, it, it really comes out, I think, from the fans. And I think in the racing, too. Like, you, it's a different energy, like, at least at, from a viewer's perspective. Yeah, it is for the athletes as well. I talked to international athletes and everyone's pretty bummed that we didn't get to go to Killington. They love the fans and it's probably a nice break for European athletes to go compete somewhere else sometime. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, weirdest year ever. Um, you post your best World Cup result yet um, just a couple weeks ago. How, like, how does that make sense? <laughs> Um, I don't know. I guess maybe just the timing was right. Um, yeah, it was a weird off season. So we were in Europe when COVID ha hit and then everything shut down. So we flew home and we're like, okay, like maybe U.S. Nationals or we'll get some late spring races. But then it was really a no go on everything, just like every other sport. But so we had a long off season from the middle of March until the beginning of September um, and just spent a lot of time in the gym getting fit and having fun over the summer and I think that put me in the best place possible for the season. And I think it's uh, working out pretty well. So I'm excited for the season. Yeah, I would say so. What did you do anything to alter your training? I mean, obviously, like with a longer off season, that means like there's more time for things to go right. But there's also way more downtime, way more time for things to go wrong. Like, how yeah. did you navigate that part of it? Um. We have a great program written by our trainer, but we did a lot of double sessions throughout the summer. And I think it was just the amount of time. It's pretty rare to get that much time off snow because people usually do summer camps and then like early fall camps. And then, then you had like go into the first World Cup with a lot more time on snow than we did this year. Um, so it was just a lot more concentrated time in the gym making big goals. There wasn't much time or like much, many things to do like in quarantine. So it's like you're sitting around April and May doing absolutely nothing besides working out. <laughs> yeah. So I guess that paid off. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right. When you aren't skiing or riding or skiing or training for skiing or talking about skiing, what other things are you doing? <laughs> like, what do you enjoy? 
Um, I really like to mountain bike and I also really enjoy gardening. I uh, built a really large garden this quarantine and got really into like canning and pickling. It's kind of weird and like old lady, really? but it's pretty fun. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Like, that's the thing I've always wanted to do, but I've never, like, actually been able to sit down and focus on doing it enough. And, like, the long goal for that, like, the results don't come right away, obviously, with gardening and pickling. Like, so <laughs> that's that's interesting that that's the thing you're into. Yeah, it was a fun and long summer of planning and harvesting. And, yeah, it took a lot of time. We uh, grew a lot of things from seeds. And so you had to be really patient. And that was tough for me. <laughs> <laughs> is that like are you would you consider yourself a patient person overall no not at all <laughs> <laughs> how come like you just like you just want it done yeah I mean it's like why not just like put your head down and get it done instead of like slowly walking through something <laughs> yeah I guess that's fair um what kind of goals do you have for your career beyond just the results like and then beyond your ski racing career like what do you want to do next have you um, thought about that yes so I did go to school for three years I'm not done with my undergrad but um my undergrad degree is going to be in biology with a minor in chemistry so I have plans to be a doctor potentially someday um so that's like end goal but ski racing um I don't really like to set any numbers or like physical or like, I don't know, physical, but just goals in that term, because I think it adds a lot of pressure and stress. So I'm just <laughs> going to keep going and having fun with my um, teammates and my fiance and just see where that takes me and see how long it goes for. Awesome. Um, well, I think that's it. I appreciate you taking the time um, to chat with me today. Yeah, thanks for uh, dealing with my uh, terrible internet. We're in some hole in Italy. That's okay. There's such a weird lag, but it's so like, it's so fun. I'm glad we got it to work out. Yeah. Thank you so much. No problem. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Talk to you. Bye. All right. Thanks everyone for listening. Um, I am out. Bye. See you next time on Fast and Loose.